I, I call myself an African, African in the dias diaspora. My father's from Barbados, uh, my mother's from Dominica, which, it, which are countries in the Caribbean. Um, and just to, I suppose, my journey to being here really starts with childhood. And um, I suppose for a lot of you, the idea of re the realization that you're black is something you, you might, I might be wrong, and please tell me if I am, you might take for granted. Um, but for me, growing up in the UK, uh, where, where there's a lot of uh, people who are not black, predominantly white, around me, um, there was a point in my life when I kind of, I, I can remember it very vividly. I was on the stairs, downstairs, and um, no one seemed to be around. And something came to my mind, and I thought, I think I was about five, maybe, and I thought, I'm black. So as I got older, I started to realize that the person that I am and the people that are around me, I don't see. So you might see black people in the newspapers and, or African people in the newspapers and so on, but there weren't people like my mum and me and my friends and, 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 and general people around me, and those people were quite invisible. Um, and also, the, so, and the voices that you saw were kind of selected. So, and selected in regard to someone else's prejudices and ideas of what a black person is and their fears and so on and so forth. So um, there's kind of elements in my work which is around uh, voice and people's voices and around place and how place is kind of represented um, as well as, as, as language. And language is quite an interesting thing because it's, it's about how we actually tell our stories. Okay. Uh, the first film I'm going to show you is a film called Body Beyond Death. And um, this film was made for an exhibition. A lot of my work is for exhibitions and galleries. Um, so this film was made for an exhibition um, called um, Doctors, Dissection and Resurrection Men. Uh, and I don't know if you know anything about it, but um, in 1832, there was an anatomy act, um, because previous to that act, uh, um, in England, uh, people used to, they, you know, they wanted to develop surgery and so what people used to do is used to get people, they called them body snatchers, and they would go and they would go into a graveyard when someone had been newly buried and dig up the body and then sell the, the body to um, uh, uh, surgeons or would-be surgeons so that they could dissect the body and, and see um, you know, how the, the body works. And there's two sides of that because ultimately surgery has developed greatly as a product of the kind of, you know, uh, not so good start, but at the same time, obviously, it's, it's a, quite a heinous, horrible thing to do. And I thought what was really interesting is the area of Whitechapel in London now, which um, is inhabited by people predominantly from the Bengali community, and um, which is obviously different from 1832. So um, uh, I wanted to look at how that community felt about, first of all, um, the idea of um, body donation. That's donating your whole body to medical science, organ donation, so when you die they would take parts of your organs, and a system which they're trying to introduce, and they already have introduced in London, which is an opt-out system, which means that if you do not opt out of this system, when you die, they will take your organs. For me, the place can mean a lot of different things. The place can mean the person um, that you're filming as a place. Uh, and if you saw the documentary that I showed yesterday, uh, the Walk and Talk um, film with Malaika Booker, a couple of people came up to me and they asked me, uh, why did I use black and white? And why did I use uh, that, those kind of cutaways where you kind of saw her, her face and elements of her? And that was almost a study of her as a place in those, those, um, those shots. I also want to think about what, what's the thinking that you, what you do when you consider the visuals that you're going to use in your film. So again, with that film of Malaika Booker, if you noticed um, the walk and talk film, the camera was quite shaky and it moved around a lot, right? And that was intentional because when we were thinking about the idea for the film, what we wanted to do is we wanted to make the audience feel like they were there and it was an intimate experience where you're there with the, these two people who are walking down the street who are talking about this amazing poet and her work um, and you're, you're, you're part of that conversation. And as you do, your eyes kind of move around when you're talking to someone and you kind of study certain things about them, the way their mouth moves, the way their hand, their, their hand gestures. And that's why that film looked the way that it did. I'm from Barbados and my mother is from Dominica. Um, but last year, I went to um, Jamaica for the first time. And I went there because uh, uh, I'm Rastafari. 
and, uh, and I'm interested in different, I call it mansions of Rastafari, and one mansion is called Bobashanti. And I'd heard about this in the UK, and, and I was very interested in what they were saying, and, but people couldn't answer all my questions. So I was fortunate, fortunate enough to be in the region at that time, and I decided to go over to Jamaica and spend 11 days in a camp, a Bobo camp. Now, the image of Jamaica, I don't know if anyone's got an image of Jamaica, um, but once again, it's, um, well, it's either the beach where, where people just kind of, black people just sit down and relax and they've got nothing to do. And those images actually come from slavery as well, because that's how they kind of justified slavery, was that the, the enslaved Africans were actually having a great time. So people thought that, you know, um, you know uh, it, it, they're having an easy time over there. Um, so, yeah, um, so I wanted to um, uh, look at that, and I also, um, so, so that's one image. And there's another image, which is um, a lot of um, undisciplined violence, um, booty shaking, corruption, all those kind of images. So the reason why I'm showing this film today um, is really because I wanted, I thought that this really shows a, a, a part of Jamaica that people don't really know about. So what comes first of all uh, in my practice is um, my preparation. So once I've got the idea of what the story is and, uh, and who, who the voice is that I want to, to say, then I think about, um, well, first of all, I think, I think about how I want to present this voice, how I want to present, pre present this story and how the visual element can kind of add to the story. Um, in the film that you just saw, um, a lot of the times the images didn't follow what was being said. Um, and, I, and I think when you put images together, when you put images with audio, there's a real magic that happens between those two. So just simply by putting um, uh, the example that I used yesterday, you say a child and you show a child, um, but if you say a child and you show a bird, it means so much more. So, I mean, the example that I gave, that I'll say right there is right at the end, you saw the, ch the, the, the children playing. But what was being said was actually very, very serious. And it was talking about um, black people and moving forward and wanting to go back to Africa and bring certain principles to Africa. It was quite heavy stuff, but you saw children playing. And, it, and what happens is you... you you, in, your, in the audience's mind, you get a third, a, there's a third meaning that comes out. And the third meaning might well be, you know, about the, our future. For, for me, and for the way that I like to tell films, is that I like, or I like to tell stories, is that I think that the audience are not stupid. And I think that, you know, where I find my voice is that place in between the visual and the audio. Do you see what I mean? So I'm, what I'm trying to do in that way is to touch people on a level rather than a literal level. I'm trying to touch them on, a, on, a, on an emotional and a spiritual level. Um, yeah, so that's why those are the choices that I make. But I'm, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with necessarily um, saying a cup and seeing a cup. But I think that if you, the way that I use my voice in a film is not to say, what do you think of this? But it, it's to put my voice in between those two, those two elements. Yeah, so the choices that I make with the visual and the, the audio allows me to speak to an audience on a different level. And there's, lot, there's different ways of making a documentary. I'm sure Thomas would have his kind of way of making a documentary, but I'm talking about my practice. So there's different elements to it. One is the audio, and for me, the audio and the visual are almost, I almost look at as separate elements. Because when you look at them as separate elements, you can have a lot of fun with them, yeah? Um, so what I do is I, I look at what, what the story is, what the voice is that I'm trying to say, and I think about how I want to present that. So the visual almost comes, for me, it almost comes afterwards. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't, it's not really afterwards, it's at the same time, but it's, it's something which you, you think of as a separate element. That's how I think of things. I think about how I want to present the story, and I also think about the feeling that I want to create. Now, um, I do a lot of different um, films, and. Uh, the styles are often very different. The film I'll show you tomorrow is a very, very, very different style from the, 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 um, the film that you saw there. And for me, um, one thing uh, I mentioned yesterday is about this idea of play. And that idea of play comes up because when you, when you have a, a story that you want to tell, it's like, how can you present it in the best way? What is the best way to present this story? 
Now, one of the things I would say generally that characterises my work is that I don't do talking heads, but you'll notice there there was a talking head. And I think in this instance, because we do not get the chance to see um, this man or, or, or you know, this elder priest talking, to see him is really important. Do you know what I mean? To sort of, you know, to be able to study him is important. And that is why I wanted to go back to him as a narrator and see his face. Um, but other times I think, actually, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to see the voices. I don't want to see the people at all. I just want to um, use the voices to um, illustrate a bigger concept. So you think about how you're going to use the visual and what is the feeling that you're trying to create. Are you trying to make something really contemporary, something really modern, um, or you, like you're bringing history into the modern day, so you're trying to do it in a way that it, it is not normally represented? Um, are you trying to show people exactly what this camp is? And therefore, it's not about chop, 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 chop. You want people to see what there is, because it's a world that's open that not many people actually see. And I think it's really important to create a kind of dynamism with, uh, with your visuals. And uh, one very easy thing to do with that is to have different size shots. Um, so it's not enough just to have a lot of mid shots or have a lot of wide shots. But to, and in the editing, this is really important. If you cut from a wide shot to a wide shot, it has less impact than if you cut from a, a, a wide shot to a close up. Because then it's like boom, and it, it, it just keeps you engaged in that way. So you, it's really important to think about different size shots, a range of different shots movement in the shots, which is dynamic. So whether it's going to be a pan or a tilt, or you know, whether it's going to be, as you'll see in the film tomorrow, a lot of crush zooms, which is a very quick zoom in or a quick zoom out. So think about what voice, you know, how, how you're going to tell this story with the visuals. And I've said find movement in the shots. And I think you know, oftentimes you can either find movement as the person that's moving in the shot or, um, or the way that you move the camera. Again, talking about the film that I showed yesterday, The Walk and Talk, where it's kind of, there's movement all the time. You know, there's a reason for that. It's not just that I just thought, oh, I haven't got my tripod, I better just hold it and I'm not very good at holding it. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, try and consider these things before you actually go and shoot. And again, it's, it, this thing about kind of focusing on um, the idea of place doesn't necessarily have to mean, um, you know, a, a place as in a setting. The setting could be your person. So the, the place is the study of a, a beautiful woman, right? Or, or, or the study of um, or a child, or you know, the way that the, the hands move, the way the head turns, the way the lips move, anything, do you know what I mean? It's, you know, that's, your, that's your place. Um, or it could um, focus on the overall subject where you're using lots of different images. Uh, I think one of the films I showed yesterday of um, uh, Body Beyond Death, uh, there was a lot of graphic Im images there. There was photographs which were done in a kind of graphic way of kind of um, body parts or, or, or bones and stuff like that. So, you know, you think, about, you think about it in terms of your overall subject, your visuals as your overall subject, or you can think of it as your location, or it can be just a combination of two or all three of those. So I've spoken about the, the, the interest that I find between the audio and the visual. Um, and it really it's about incorporating some kind of poetry into your work. So, you know, we can do this kind of, I mean, you know, poetry touches you on another level. So the poetry between the image and the audio is something that you can really play with. Um, I'm here really to talk to you about my practice and, you know, and hopefully you can use that in your palette of, of, of techniques that you have in the future as you move on with your careers.